any case, shall we make a start? If you'd like to follow me, we'll go to the Masonic Garden. Thank you. Well, just do, do a couple of seconds every now and again. I'm not going to be able to um, um, deviate from what I'm saying and um, if I can just draw attention from every place we're going to visit uh, with the bosun's call. So, <whistles> thank you. And that's just to draw your attention. Um, can you all hear me? That's another thing. Yes. yes. It's very important that you do. Well, today we have some little people that have visited and it's lovely to see a family. And um, I, I love children, as you probably can guess. Yeah, they're they're very know. meaningful. Mm. Couldn't eat all one though. And uh, in my bag, <laughs> we have Froggy the Frog. <laughs> and um, he's been with me for a good few years. And. Um, goes all over the place, you know, and just tucks in quite nicely. <laughs> My name is Froggy the Frog, purely because number one and number two, if you'd like to pass those round and let me have them back. Um, I was a frogman, shallow water diver. And also, you'll see that I was a French sailor as well. I did six weeks as a linguist on the French cruiser Bernay at Toulon. So um, that makes me a frogman and a French-speaking sailor. But I'm very British and very proud of it. Because of the little people, I have brought some frogs for them. Oh. Oh. If you'd like wow. to have a frog. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody else like a frog? <laughs> um, so here we are in the Masonic. We, we, we're Masons, we're Knights Templar. We're an order of ma Masons. And here we are in this great garden. The two ashlers, um, for those that don't know about them, one is the rough ashler when you start your masonry, and this is the smooth ashler when you become a master mason after three degrees. The tatulated um, carpet, I can't see an edging around it, <laughs> um, it gives you a um, truth relief unbrotherly love, which is a wonderful foundation uh, of, of our organisation. And um, masonry, at the end of the day, is one of the most lovely 
lovely moral um, organisations, in particular for men. There are uh, lady masons as well, of course, we mustn't forget that, but purely, really, um, uh, it's a wonderful thing for men. Um, to me, um, I, I, I love my masonry. It, it, it gives me that platform to work from. Um, I'm not going to take too much about masonry because that would be unfair. What I would like to say is that there's a lot of people that wear masons that lost their lives in two world wars and beyond, of course. And that's what this garden is all about, really, is a point of remembrance, to remember all those uh, that have given their lives um, to, to our country. So we're going to move on now. And the next little place we visit, we'll put Froggy back in. And um, thank you. Right, how are you? You can have a go in a minute. I'll give Are you we all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the Phantom Memorial. It uh, has a considerable amount of um, reflection to uh, rather special people during difficult times. Um, the, the, the French people admired one person in particular, and that was Winston Churchill. Um, I, I don't fully know um, how they found the courage um, in their resistance about this guy. Uh, the news from London uh, was always transformed. If you had a radio and you could pick it up, it was good news. Um, you weren't allowed to, to listen to, to, to these programs or in an occupied country it was forbidden, of course. Um, so you can well imagine how this man um, really gave everybody that little bit of a chance. Um, the chappy that uh, brought this stone all the way from Alsace, it's a pink granite. And um, lads from the SAS put it in the back of the Land Rover and brought it here for him, which was fantastic, really. But uh, Len Owens, I'll pass it down, um, was in combined operations on a similar basis with I was, but much later, of course. Um, he. Uh, was dropped by parachute in 1943 um, in the Bouge and um, it was an SAS operation where they would be able to consolidate uh, a, 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 a piece of uh, area because the American Sixth Army was coming up at such a rate but got caught at Bastogne, if you remember the, the bad winter and the whole thing that went terribly wrong at Bastogne. But Patton would not cross the Meurthe River and the Moselle into that part of Alsace where these boys were. And uh, the little village of Mousse, um, the lads were up in the forest and it was <coughs> wet and cold, you know. So you can imagine, it's not easy going. And they would come into the village for substance, you know, and a little bit of comfort if they could find some. And there was a Madame Lavren, the Queen, and she had this big house. And the German soldiers, the good boys they were, downstairs drinking the wine and, and having a whoopee time. And the SAS boys were upstairs getting warm, drying their clothes, and <coughs> having a whoopee upstairs. And this, this shows the stupidity of war, isn't it? Um, the Wehrmacht boys downstairs, the German boys, they're just ordinary German soldiers, very good blokes, you know, nice, no, not a problem. And, and our boys upstairs, it's similar, you know. However, uh, things didn't go well. Um, there was um, uh, uh, a, 
a big German um, uh, SS um, unit um, that uh, felt that it just had to consolidate um, these villages in the Rebador Valley and clear the resistance out. And uh, it was very tough. Here is the names of all the villagers that never mentioned anything about the SAS. And the men and the boys were deported to concentration camps. And only 40% of them came back. And they, this is called the Village of Tears. So, as I said to you, some of the things I'm telling you are tough. But it just shows the disparity basically of life and uh, where we're told so, you know we come into this world not by choice when our mothers and fathers produce us and we've come into this world but we all go down different avenues we're, we're religion uh, politics uh, uh, your, your work uh, your profession uh, you go down these different avenues and therefore, especially with wartime, you can be conditioned. It's not always news, it can be propaganda as well, a lot of propaganda. And you're told things that sometimes aren't quite right. But it's there for a reason. And I'm sorry to say, uh, there was a lot of um, indifference uh, between ourselves and the French. Um, especially at Dunkirk. Um, a, a complete misconception there. Um, I think Bertram Ramsey was a fantastic man and what he managed to do to get the British Expeditionary Force off with the little boats was fantastic. Uh, Churchill said if he could get 30 to 40,000 people off the beaches that would be it. He couldn't think otherwise. Bertram Ramsey got all the little boats and they got down there and he brought back 235,000 British and went back for the French and managed to bring 103,000 of the French. And I've got a photograph at home of all the French boys on the hoe at Plymouth. And it's just a massive... They were, Worn out, they were. They were just lying on 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 the, on the grass. I, I, I don't want to uh, reminisce too much and make it ugly. So, um, if uh, you can understand a little bit about this and uh, the sacrifice uh, that, that these people, I've been back to Moussé several times, and the, the French people, you know, they they, they, they really make a make you feel comfortable, they really do. You can't have a drink, you can't buy any food or anything. They, they make you most welcome at Moussa, yes. Yes, yes, actually do. The, the, the whole idea really was to um, help the Maki, the underground, hmm? and, and uh, they were disorganised, the Maki. And, and, and it's, it's sad, sad to say that there were hundreds of people prepared to, to do something and, and we dropped arms you know uh, for them but um, it, it, it really just wasn't good so the SAS were there not as a fighting force but as a supporting a supporting group basically um, they, they really hadn't got the strength I mean uh, the, the first lot was 30 and then the, the second lot was 90 um, paratroopers you know uh, and and um, I, I'm just going to very briefly say about my mother, who was in SOS, S SOE, Special Operations Executive, but RF section, not the F section, which was Baker Street. She was with De Gaulle and, and the French section. And uh, I thought she was, because I spoke to Len. Uh, Sergeant Len Owens, this is his uh, epitoire here, and he, he spent £16,000 of his pension to put this memorial together. That's how he felt, and, 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 and his, his feeling about the people of the, 
of, of, of Moussé and, and, and the villages. He, he was a dear man and I, I've shown you a photograph of, of him at the top. Yes, yes. A, a dear boy. Uh, and um, I, I made friends with him for quite some time. He felt that he'd met Mother. But I'll tell you about it later on because it did not happen here. Mother was further on down in the Jura, um, uh, not in the road. So let, let us just move on a little bit further if we can. Yeah. Are you happy with um, Our next memorial is the Battle of the River Plate. This was one of the, in fact, the very first naval engagement uh, of any substance. Um, the winter. 39. Um, the Germans had got one or two pocket battleships and um, the Graf Spray um, was, uh, as, as you can see, her weaponry, um, 15 inch, um, would cause a considerable amount of damage. Um, Exeter which was an old um, cruiser, came up with the Anzacs, the uh, Australian New Zealand boys, uh, to help Ajax and Achilles, which were light, light cruisers. And this is a six inch um, projectile. Um, this uh, uh, very large piece will have two bags of cordite which is silk, um, so it just burned us up immediately um, with the contents of cordite inside. The, the trajectory, once it's fired, would probably reach about 15 to 20 miles. So if you think in terms of here, the other side of the front, um, somebody having breakfast, one of those dropping on you, it wouldn't be very pleasant. Um, at the engagement, um, before they got into the River Plate, Exeter took the brunt of the, uh, of, of, of the problems of the Graf Spray, and, and, and she was really disabled virtually. I think it was only the forward turret that was uh, um, uh, able to do anything. So it left Ajax and Achilles to keep on going round like a couple of wasps putting in uh, the six-inch shells. Now, you'll notice that I was a naval gunner, so I was an able seaman, a gunner, and I went to the gunnery school of HMS Cambridge uh, near Plymouth um, to um, learn something about gunnery. And um, it is fascinating um, to think that uh, only once did I ever go into a gun turret where there was an 18 inch, that's 15 inch, so that's an 18 inch project, oh, like a dustbin. Um, but we only fired two bags of cordite. And the noise and the pressure inside there, under your arms, in between your legs, your ears, you know, I, I, I can't explain um, to just how terrible that is. And if you think in terms of the Ramillies and the war spite on D-Day, putting those projectiles every four to five minutes, what those men... You'd be like a Jerry, wouldn't you? But there were 24 in a housing with four guns. And these projectiles were going out on D-Day. Unbelievable. Remarkable people. Mm. A job to be done, of course. Gunnery. Any case, um, Admiral Graf Spray decides to go up into Montevideo and dock and get the crew off. The skipper was a real good man. He really was a kind man and he, he didn't want to lose his boys. So he dropped them off 
and they were interned <laughs> in the in Nicaragua or Guatemala, I can't remember now, um, for the duration of the war. And he came back with a volunteer crew down the river and he scuttled her. He scuttled the grass feet. And he took his own life as well. Hitler was furious. <laughs> he said that they should have taken the whole lot out and furious. <laughs> but uh, there is humanity, isn't it, for his boys. In uh, hmm. any case, uh, a six inch shell is QF, quick firing. So it has a brass shell casing. And I was on Vickers four inch, that's a little bit smaller. And you used to, they're heavy, you put them on your arm and you punch them into the breech. Because if you put your fingers in, the breech comes off and you lose all your fingers. Oh dear, oh dear. So you have to punch them. And when they come out, they're red hot. You gotta catch them. No, you, 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 they come out onto the floor and, and you push them into the netting. And if you lose them, if they go into the sea, you know, oh my word, they're 500 pounds each. And that was 65 years ago. Yeah. Brass, you know. But the noise, as I say, it's absolutely incredible, incredible. I served on a submarine, I'll tell you about those a bit later on, but that was the last gun on a submarine. I served on Tudor and Tally Ho. Tally Ho had got a lot of brummies, that was a Midland boat. But, but, but the Tudor, the Tudor, that was the last four inch pop gun. And many years later, oh, I met the chap here and he said, oh, you on the Tudor? I said, yeah, only a short time. I said, got to erase it. I said, God, he said, do you know where that gun is? I said, no, it's farming for Santa Fe in America. It's on top of somebody's box. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? But, um, there we are, there's the, uh, the cruisers, there's the old Exeter you see, and then uh, the yeah. two new light, light, light cruisers. <coughs> yeah. Right, I think we can move on. Oh. Everybody have any questions? <laughs> it's that if you're in a teacup on the sea, you're in the teacup <laughs> and there's nowhere else you can go apart from the teacup and um, it's sad to say that this was one of the greatest losses of life um, really recorded um, with the Navy. Um, the Neptune and the Kandahar Germans had moved into North Africa, the Africa Corps, and the Italians were there en bloc. So Libya and going into Egypt was a difficult area to be in, Tobruk and so on. There was a very big um, merchant um, delivery of arms um, from Italy into Libya and um, it was uh, Flotilla K <laughs> and uh, we sent um, one or two ships to intervene and unfortunately we didn't intervene we got into a minefield off the coast of Libya and uh, Neptune proceeded at such a speed 
but she hit two or three mines and she went down very quickly and you can see there the amount of people that lost their lives lost their lives the Kandahar went to help her and she hit mines as well and she went down as well but only half the crew disappeared no more to be said young men hmm? 18 19 20 years of age on average uh, that's my cousin by the way Raymond I thought he was some sort of demigod you know because uh, <laughs> he was a naughty boy and uh, he was in the Royal Marines, wasn't he? So I said, I want to join the Navy. But then I didn't want to be a Royal Marine. So I became a sailor and he was a Marine. And that was the last time we had a photograph in Malta. He was in St George's Lines and I was in Fort Angelo in the Grand Harbour. And uh, he married a... <laughs> funny lad. His dad was a very high ranking officer in the RAF for the Berlin Airlift. Yes. And uh, when he had to do his national service he said leave it to me I'll get you into Cranwell which was the RAF officer's call. So he turns round and uh, fell in love with a girl at Rodine School, mm -hmm. public school on South Downs, and was caught um, coming down um, the drain pipe you know, from um, the girls' quarters, and all the girls going, gah, 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 gah. and, and the, the thing broke and he fell into the courtyard. Well, he was at Mon's school at the time, public school, and <laughs> They got rid of him. <laughs> and he went and joined the Royal Marines. His father was absolutely besotted by him, but he was just a naughty boy, you know. And I loved him, I thought he was great, absolutely mm. wonderful. Mm. And he owes me five pounds. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there was some military administrator's wife that um, he entertained, and the in the hotel in the letter he took her for a big meal and he said have you got any money to me i said well that, that's all i've got and five pounds was a lot of money in those days like a hundred pounds today i said you better give it me back right and i've never had it thank you <laughs> so you see there's a sad side to it, mm. and there's also yeah, the funny side thinking, to it. That's, that's a nice memory, yes. Isn't it? Mm. Yes. Oh. Refugees, of course. Um, we had to clear out our cities because of bombing, and um, the children were sent all over the country. And, um, they, were, they were there during the duration of the war. And, people on farms and, and, and all sorts of places uh, 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 wonderful word. yes yes uh, yeah courageous country we are we're the, we're the best country in the world fine fine people and then they, of course we got our Commonwealth as well now and um, They've uh, been now accepted, thank God, for the work that they've done. And without the, the help of them in our national health and so on, we'd have big problems today, you know. So um, I, I, I had to go into um, Good Hope uh, and uh, Burton on a couple of occasions, um, purely because uh, 
uh, I was in such pain with sciatica over the winter and the uh, girls from Jamaica and uh, some kids made me laugh so much I felt better. <laughs> I said, you haven't got a bottle of rum, girls, have you? <laughs> they said, we, we, no. we, can't, we can't subscribe rum. Just take your tablets. <laughs> Lovely girls. Okie dokie. Come on then, get yourselves round. If you think of this one to feed with, and they're always repairing little bits and pieces, because it's sandstone, and it doesn't weather, you know, it doesn't weather at all. So, um, but nevertheless, um, this is a, a very new uh, memorial, uh, that's uh, two or three years old. But um, it's the Scout Memorial, the War Scout Association. And um, very meaningful to me. Um, I was a wolf cub in 1947. <laughs> and I always remember going to East North Park near Hereford. And um, Lady Elizabeth. Lord Summers was the second chief scout after Baden Powell. Baden Powell died and Lord Summers took over. And Lady Elizabeth had got a big tray full of, do you remember the sticky buns with the, the uh, icing on the top and the cherry? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this is just after the war, isn't it? And for a little wolf cub to see. <laughs> It was devoured within three seconds. <laughs> uh, and, and you never forget those things, you know. You look back and then everything. So I came to Birmingham at the age of nine from uh, a, a wonderful life in the country, in the lovely, lovely county, Herefordshire. But it was all animals and farms, and I knew more about sheep and cattle, and you know, probably more so than human beings, really. But um, academically, nurch. <laughs> and I came to Birmingham at the age of nine, and I had to go to school. But. Um, they realised that I was illiterate. I couldn't read or write. But I was very clever because I used to faint things so they thought that I could, you see. And I used to get away with it tremendously. Incredible. Uh, and in uh, any case, um, a lovely lady called Pat O'Sullivan, Irish as it is. She said, Richard, she said, you're a box of dynamite. And she said, the day we open the door, God help us. And she was right. So she taught me to read and write, and above all, Mary Richardson handwriting. Beautiful. And I love writing letters today. Um, if, if you accept it, um, I can turn around and say, I'd, I'd love to write a letter to you. But um, I started to read books, and two of my favourite books were Alice in Wonderland by Carol and Gulliver's Travels, Jonathan Swift. 
and uh, Okay, I'm deviating a bit, so we'll we'll come back to Jonathan Swift in a little bit later on, right? Um, but, but my scouting um, started at Quinton, West Birmingham, um, with the first Quinton Scouts, 169th Birmingham, <laughs> and it was my life. I, uh, we had a trek cart. I'd go over the uh, the Walton and Clent Hills. I, I was away at the no, weekend. John. And I, 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 I loved it. It, it, it. it was a fantastic foundation for me. And I, I, I've been a scout ever since. And, and masonry and scouting bond together, you know. It, it's, um, I became a Queen Scout and I went to the World Scout Jamboree at Sutton Coalfield in 1957. Fantastic, I'll never forget that. 32,000 scouts from all over the world. And then later I went to the 100th World Scout Jamboree at Haywards Park in Essex. And I stayed in one of the universities, Robinson University in Cambridge. We had a marvellous time, 380 of us that had been at the 57 Jamboree. So, so to me, you know, yeah, a deep sea scout. I was a scout when I, I was in the Navy. And you, you could visit places where there were scouts and you were made most wealthy. So scouting is a fantastic uh, organisation, like, like masonry, uh, and, and good for the soul, eh? <laughs> good for the soul. Any questions about scouting? <laughs> Young girly, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, can I have a photograph of you covering the feature? And the other sketch. On, on here? Yeah. Rosie, Alex, come here a minute, please. Alex. <coughs> Just for two minutes. Yeah. Get in there. Come here a minute. Post along me. Here yeah, Do come in, <laughs> Robert. Venture. Venture sketch. Wow, 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 wow. Well, mm. yeah. 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 well, you know, on the screen hasn't cracked. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Have you come to the end of the battery or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Carrier. Uh, and the flower of remembrance in France is this little fella oh, here. Know that, yeah. Thank you. Well done. The brain plays me up sometimes. So, uh, hold it still. Hold it still. There. Right there. Can you all hear me? Yes? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Combined operations. Special tactical coordination through the three services. Uh, I would hold it. We all work together uh, for special jobs. One of real importance was the Falklands, of course. But, um, I was out in Eden, uh, out in Aden, Aden, and the Persian Gulf, and the policy was called East of Suez. And we all worked together um, to uh, formulate a uh, strong point at the bottom of the Red Sea. Across the water were the French. And um, just, I think they've got some 
military press had said, but the only people that I did get to know were the French Foreign Legion, Légion Étrangère. And I, I was a linguist, you see. <laughs> so I had to take this young subaltern, he got a plum in his mouth, he came from Harrow, a bit to eat. Lovely man. And he got an attache case and everything and got over to Djibouti and he said, uh, well I can't see anybody. I said, well you've got to be patient. I said, you know, we're in the middle of the desert. <coughs> I said, somebody will turn up. And an Alouette helicopter came along and on the, underneath was a little Dian motor car. Little, 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 you know, no windows, no doors, <laughs> and it was dropped into the sand. Fog it off. <laughs> and then two visionaires come along over the hill. English? I said, oh, je, je parle French, je crois. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm grand baiser, you know, and uh, elegant. Uh, bottle of Algerian wine, litre, litre, uh, a baguette, and a uh, big sausage. He turns around and said, well, I can't eat that. I said, well, I'll have it then. <laughs> <laughs> we, we sat in this thing, my knees locked up <laughs> in the back of his little Dian. <laughs> you know, these French, uh, they're funny people, but no radiators, no water required. They're air cool, aren't they? Yeah. And then, then there was going all over the place with these funny little things. And I thought to myself, how ingenious. <laughs> Better than walking, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, my indoctrination basically was quite early, you know. And um, my, my introduction to SBS was very short, <clears throat> wasn't very long. <laughs> and I was tactically drawn in because I was a linguist and I could draw so they put me down as a tactical sketcher of all things <laughs> so they sent me to get my wings I'm supposed to be a parachutist as well it's a part of and they sent me to Abingdon um, Dalton Barracks. But I, I, I climbed up on, you know, and did all of, yeah, did all, but when it went, I had to go up in a balloon, this massive big, with a little box and a hole in the middle. <laughs> 600 feet of box. <laughs> I said, I want my mother. <laughs> I said, I can't jump. You get one more chance, you know, to fly sergeant. You get one more chance, you've got its clipboard, you know. You, go, you have to go back to your English. But I don't want to see you. It's, it's horrible. At least they didn't push you. <laughs> no, no pushing. No, 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 nothing like that. If you, if you couldn't do yeah, it, you couldn't do it. Was it. it. So I went back. And they... <laughs> it didn't... Show any mercy whatsoever. It, 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 this major of marines stood up and he says, "You're an absolute disgrace." He said, "I've seen people like you before." He said, "You're the sort that gets underneath the carpet and hope we don't see you." And I thought to myself, "What am I joining?" <laughs> God sake! Bring on the foreign legion! I'll go there. <laughs> any case, bang wallop. Oh. HMS Dolphin, lots of four submarines. So I ended up as a canoeist, swimmer. No parachutes, yeah, no, no, yes. no parachutes. A water baby. <laughs> In any case, let's talk about this now. The stones came from Scotland. And um, the one at the back is six ton in weight. 
and three quarters of it is in the ground and it shouldn't be. We put so much concrete in it went Uh, and it should have gone in the garden there, the grove, originally. But then there was a tug of war between Mike, SAS, and Jeff Slee up in Edinburgh, Scotsman, um, saying he didn't want a Mike's design for the floor. It had to be like this. So this, this tug of war went on. The stones were left down there for two or three years because he wouldn't have them and this one said that you can't have them, they're, they're ours. And, and, and in the end, I had to get a Greenham's tray, crane here, cost me £600, to lift the stuff up and drop it in. But the people who dug the hole and put the concrete in dug it too deep. so. Half the stone's <coughs> gone in, into the ground. So it should be a lot higher than that. But this is our, our memorial. I, I, I've built this <laughs> just for the fun of it. Yeah. And it gives you some insight basically of the greatest armada that human beings have ever been able to produce. And when you think some 200. Capital ships, I think, with 2,300 vessels of various types. Um, but um, a complete armada um, for D Day, the 6th of June. Um, I had a friend who was a butcher at Burntwood, a chap named Ray Robinson, and he was on a Gooseberry ship. And the Gooseberry ships were merchant ships and old naval ships that were going to be blown the bottoms out and they make a breakwater for the Mulberry Harbour. <laughs> he said to me, he said things were flying about a little bit because they were getting a bit close and they were off, they were in line after the old French battleship Corbert. She was to be blown up and so on. And he was having a cigarette at the back of the funnel with one or two of his mates, you know, just sort of taking it easy. And a petty officer turned around and said, what are you doing? He said, oh, we're just having a break. A break? He said, get some bluebell and start doing all the, all the bright work and, and let's clean all this up. We don't want the Germans to think that we're slack. I've <laughs> <laughs> only got to blow the blooming thing up. I, I, I creased myself. I don't do <laughs> right, let, let's walk over to the other side there and then um, we're, we're into the garden. And I'm going to lead, lead you through this garden. Um, because this is Central Sand. This is rather special. Just gone dead for a few mm. seconds. Um, just, just Franken dial. You do. Well, we'll, we'll get rid of them in a minute. Imagination. Uh, I had a friend uh, working for me, uh, a lad from Jamaica. Uh, this was in Wensbury when I worked for Walsh Grounds in the timber trade. And I said to him, I said, Austin, I said, what are the greatest things you've done in this country? He said, education and imagination. 
I said, well, that's a wonderful little mark. And here's a man. Um, Airy Need. Um, the IRA decided to blow him up outside Westminster in the latter part of his life. Uh, but um, he was a prisoner of war on two or three occasions and they sent him to various stalags and uh, prisoner of war camps and he escaped. So um, in the end they said, we've had enough of your behaviour, um, we're sending you to Colditz Castle and you will not escape. He made friends with a Polish officer, Polska, and they learned German together. The, the, the Polish officer could speak extremely good German, and he taught <laughs> his lordship <laughs> uh, how to have conversation German. In the meantime, they were making German uniforms, officer uniforms a colonel and a major, and they were immaculate, couldn't tell the difference between a real one and a different. And these two, walking down to the gates, slapping the, um, you know, um, gloves, <laughs> gloves, yeah, <laughs> your voice, and uh, open the gate, out they went. And the next thing they got was a card from Gibraltar. They made a home run. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Wow. But can you see what I mean? The imagination. Yes. Yes. You'll never get out. Yeah. You, you don't speak to these guys yes, and say way. you're yes. not going to do it. <laughs> They'll prove that they will do it. And how wonderful, mm. how, how clever, how ingenious to walk out as a journalist. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And be saluted yeah. as well. You okay. don't get better than that, do they? <laughs> if you're going to escape. <laughs> um, this uh, here is the Star of Danger. Uh, this is the Star of Danger. And uh, we're now with SOE, Special Operations Executive. That plaque there is in Bedfordshire. Hmm? And it's a special operations air unit. And uh, my mother uh, used to get lifted up from there and dropped into Occupy France. Mm. Mm. These girls were under the British um, SOE. And they didn't make it, unfortunately. It's 15 of them there. And this lady here, Vera Atkins, was in charge of uh, Baker Street SOE. Uh, tough time. Um, the star of David was, but she was a Romanian Jewess. And she married an uh, English officer, Atkins. So she became Vera Atkins. There are things which I think would be unsettling about Baker Street, so I'm not going to mention it, if you don't mind. But uh, Mum, I'll put this on here. Mum, Mum. France uh, collapsed in the May of uh, 1940. For various reasons, you will. Um, you had a choice with France. Um, 1940, May, it collapsed. The Germans had got through at Sedan. Their mobilised units were going through like a, a knife through butter. And their uh, Stuka aircraft dropping you a nice 500 pound bomb 
um, took out anything of importance. So the British Expeditionary Force had to retire from Belgium and get out from France as quick as they possibly can. The French First and Second Army, bear in mind at the beginning of the war the French had one of the biggest land armies and Poland uh, that, 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 that there was. She had a, a million men under arms and six armies, uh, some obviously for foreign use in, in the colonies. But in any case, the First and Second Army were there and uh, We, we had to get our people off out of France and that was the most important thing. So I think there was a lot of bitterness and indifference. It's a shame but it's the truth. My mother had a youngest brother, Clébert, and he was taken prisoner in, with the first French army. And he was sent to a prisoner of war camp near Stuttgart, Wolfsburg, which was the VW works. You see. And he never came back, so I, I won't go into any great de detail. But um, I, I've shown you that, haven't I? Yeah. You, you, you've seen that before, yeah. as a young man. Yeah. Um, I, I'll pass these round. That's my father and Georges. Um, a lot of the French soldiers came over from the 120,000. Yeah. And that's my mother and saying goodbye to my brother and I um, before she went off on operations. You changed much, you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, again, mother with uh, Georges. She was a that's tough little woman. Oh, no, no, no. And uh, that is uh, preparing the uh, people for the drop. Uh, and that would be there at um, Get the Church. All right. Yeah. <coughs> Now, this is interesting. <coughs> You've all seen that before, haven't you? It's Masonic as well, isn't it? Very Masonic. Croix Rouge. <coughs> it's a side order as well, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's the Croix de Lorraine. The Habsburgs. Part of the Holy Roman Empire. What on earth has it got to do with scouting? What has it got to do with masonry? What has it got to do with Charles de Gaulle? I question. We know that Churchill was a mason. We know that Roosevelt was a mason. I still don't know whether Charles de Gaulle was a mason. But if he was, he certainly got the right emblem for free French, didn't he? Question mark. Yeah. Very interesting. I've yet to find out. He made up an army as best as he possibly could of what he got, and he called them the Free French, the France Libre. And they were made up of Free French Masons, royalty, business people, Jews, important odds and sods. So, really, it wasn't a very clever organisation to start with. But it built up, it, it started to build up. It, it, it was the opposition to the Vichy, which was controlled by the Germans, and the socialist communists, which really was more of the working people in France. A lot of them are socialists, in any case. So. These were the people that, at the end of the day, if you upset them, they would send your railway down the wrong way, instead of going that way with all the armaments. <laughs> Finally, it was going, you know, down to Nice or Monte Carlo, which upset um, the uh, occupying forces, and uh, they used to retaliate badly. You know. <clears throat> um, 
so 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 that's that little bit. Um, everybody happy with that? Any questions yeah. at all? Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Television, wasn't it? Lewis Collins. Mm. Yes. So you see, this grove, this, this um, it is full, full of importance and and, and treasures. I haven't been up for a few weeks. So, uh... Nineteen fifteen, played uh, Neve Chapelle, um, Picardy. Um, did your mother survive her yes. yes, yes she did, yes, yes she did. She was 69 when she passed on, Dad was 81, so he was without her for 11 years. And it was tough for him, because he loved her dearly. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, here it's about 12 o'clock here, and we should be back by one. So I'll give you a call then, all right? So the majority of them were Canadians, and uh, it, it was futile. It, it was um, absolute butchery. But um, we learnt an awful lot from it, from what I guess, I don't know. But we got these new plaques being made at the moment. There to be put on. Bear in mind <coughs> the whole of this was nothing 20 years ago, nothing but just sand and rubble and remarkable what we've mm -hmm. managed to achieve yes. you know, yes. over that period of time. And, and so much history within it. Mm. <coughs> I don't remember where them stones came from. <laughs> Can't tell her. No. Uh. Oh, wait. Was it Mr. Puddle? Yeah, look. Um, I, I, want, I want to hold it. See? Um, <laughs> I want to hold it. Um, with um, British uh, prisoners of war and getting them out. In a minute. And she it cost her a life in the end. Um, she, uh, Sorry, I'm oh, not no, 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 fine. <laughs> read about it and tell you all about it. Hello. Uh, How old are you? Four. Four. Oh. Zooming along. Still. There you go. Hi. I don't know about bravery or the lunatics, actually. Oh, but what they managed to accomplish and do, just unbelievable. But I've got to watch the time, we, we've still got quite a bit to do, so if you don't mind, um, you, what, what I'm going to say is, do come back again at some time and spend some time having a look at all the little uh, plaques and memorials, you know, because it's well worth it. And um, uh, as I said, there's, there's so much, but I find it difficult sometimes. Oh, so let's now. move. Uh, but we've oh, come, come to um, mm, the uh, uh, aqua centre of uh, the grove, which is a beautiful building. The sun room. Uh, Good Lord, my call. <laughs> Mr. Michael Colton, <laughs> 22 SAS. <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, this is a deer party. A deer party. Yes, <laughs> yes, a deer, a deer party. Never came to the Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And um, we, we've uh, just had a, a nice little walk down. Yeah. And um, the, the, the thing is like everything else. You, you can hold it. Yay! Give it to a minute. First And you've given everyone a great guardian tour. Well, as best as I can, uh, Mike. Yeah. As best as I possibly can. So we're going to end up here, uh, and um, we're not going down the pavement. Why do? Well, I'm afraid I'll we haven't got time now. I didn't realise that we were running out of time. Can you hold my poostie? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, right, there, 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 there you are. Thank you. Anyway, while you're all here.
you will be able to find more about this road on the website that you'll find on there. And also on the front of this, I'm interrupting Mrs. Little no, talk not here. At all. You carry on as you as you I'm taking over as normal. That is the picture of me 20 years ago by the pillbox wow. that you see. You haven't you know, aged a day. I, exactly. And there's another picture inside 50 years ago of me uh, in a war zone. Um, that was 50, and I haven't aged from that either. <laughs> Over to you, Richard. Yes, thank you, Mike. Um, <laughs> um, you have something to say, Richard. Come on. <laughs> it will be the first time if he hasn't. Um, without Mr. Mike Colton here, we wouldn't have a grow. Um, I, I, I can't thank him enough for everything that he does. Um, he works here every morning of the week um, from nine, half nine oh. un until lunchtime. No, it's six o'clock. Why do you have a watch? Oh, it's, it's down to six o'clock now, is it? Oh, well, there we go. That's what I didn't know. Uh, no, no, but but, but what, what a wonderful garden that he's created. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um, yeah. we're, we're, we're so very fortunate. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to find the, the, the last um, couple of shots. I swing it on you. You do worse swinging on me. You would, so, would you? I do, monkey. Richard. You want to do it again? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yes. My friend is digging out. Ready? Got two minutes coming up. Yes. My goodness. Come and see how the selfies dug out. Yes. It's a tourist attraction down there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm very old. You know. thanks, thanks, thanks very much. Lovely. <coughs> I'm not old. I like you. <laughs> so, um. Why did you bring your hat? Pardon? Why did you bring your hat? Um, Why did I bring your hat? Look. Well, so I haven't got any hair here. on the top. If you'd like to move through. Daddy, take your hat off! Oh, keeps my head warm. <laughs> it's already warm. That was the serif that dropped the body off at Alva in Operation Mincemeat. You, you may have seen the film. Or, mm. And uh, Bill was a, a lovely man. And I did a sketch of the serif and I presented it to him on that, that particular evening. Talking about claustrophobia or close workings, with a small submarine. Have a look at that. <laughs> it's not, isn't it? <laughs> Smaller than a U-class, which is one of our boats. Hmm. But some... Um, this um, particular canoe here, um, Uncle Shell Heroes. In any case, these guys went up the oh, river Giraffe to Bordeaux. And um, how they managed, <laughs> there was only two of them that actually got out. 
Unbelievable. We had an open day, didn't we? Mm. We had an open day here when this was mm. open. Yes. And they had a canoe from the day. Yes. Right? Yes. Now you see John Mills in the film going up the river, pedalling away. Paddle, 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 paddle. They paddled for miles, didn't they? Yes. They had an engine in the back of the canoe. <laughs> Nobody knows that. It sat there and I've still got a picture of it oh, with no. an engine in the back. Uh, but Peter, Peter, that was a different canoe. <laughs> now it was a different operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that was Uncle Archie, that was. <laughs> and, and these were specially made for the operation we had against the Japanese. Um, so, I, I, as I say, I'm sorry that we're running out of time, and um, I wish I could uh, spend a good bit more time with you. <laughs> and show you a little bit more because it's probably that more to this. But if you do have a chance to come back to some time, come and have a bit of lunch here and I hope it's done today. It's well worth it. And there's so much more <coughs> to see. And, um, and and you've only got to read the facts really. Uh, they they will uh, describe and tell you most of it. So don't pick the flowers. No, you can't pick the blooming flowers. So, thank you. Wow. I said thank you. You did say thank you. That was well done. They're yeah. absolutely beautiful. Right. I said thank you. 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 I said thank you